everyone, welcome to my project proposal presentation. I decided to do this as a video blog because I've realized this is actually just how I work. It also makes it a bit easier for me to show you some audiovisual material without having to keep opening a bunch of files to play for you. But I am posting this on YouTube as well, so hello to all my YouTube viewers! This video is going to be a little bit different, but it'll give you a neat update on where I'm at, so stick around and give me some comments about what you think. I'm still figuring out who I am as a creative person, it's been a bit of a rocky journey for me. On the one hand, I do have that itch to keep making things, but on the other, I actually have more of a maths brain, so I kind of feel like none of this really comes all that naturally to me. I also get bored easily, so that stops me from specialising and overall makes me feel a bit directionless. Throw in a sort of conservative upbringing, 13 years of restrictive Catholic schooling, my past insecurities, and my recurring episodes of depression, and you get a basic recipe for my erratic inner life. In general though, I think my art just comes from this need to express myself and stop all the crap in my head from swirling, but that includes a lot of things, which could be more introspective topics like my emotions, or they could be more external. For example, last year I did a few projects that dealt with nuclear war and post-apocalyptic things. It really depends on what I happen to be obsessing about at the time. Last year I got two key pieces of feedback about my art. One being that I should make more use of my writing, and the other that I should do more with sound. I'd also already explored this a bit in this artwork where I recorded myself speaking and then took the visual representation of the sound and put the words inside. When you think about this though, if you combine words and sound, that's virtually lyrics and melody, at least to me. And I've become a bit dissatisfied with visual arts lately. It was helpful while I was depressed, but now that I'm okay, I'm finding myself drawn back to music again. I just have a much stronger emotional connection to it. Often, I look at visual art and I feel nothing. But if I'm having a bad day, I can chuck on a good song and it moves me in a way that nothing else can. It's been about two years since my last band went on hiatus and I lost confidence in my music making while I was depressed. So I feel like it's about time I got back into it. As for the subject matter, I've decided to look at asexuality because it's a topic I've avoided for a long time, but one that still has a lot of implications for my life. And I guess because I've been more social lately, it's one of those things that's been bugging me again. Asexuality means I'm not sexually attracted to anyone, and in my case, I'm not interested in romance either. That usually surprises people, but otherwise they don't really think it's a big deal. Usually because asexuality hasn't had the same kinds of overt oppression as other orientations, like homosexuality. It's not really that simple though. You can't just say no to a society that hypes up sex and romance, from entertainment through to advertising. It's not that easy. I still get people telling me I have a medical problem, or that I haven't dated enough people. But these are the kinds of things we've generally agreed you shouldn't say to a gay person in response to them not liking the opposite sex. And it turns out that there are even LGBT people who don't think my sexuality is valid, which is incredibly frustrating. I've even had the occasional person online suggesting that rape would fix me. So there's actually a lot that asexual people have to put up with. I can't even begin to tell you all the shit that I've been through. So what I've decided to do is combine my renewed interest in music with the subject matter of asexuality. There are precedents for asexual music, but if you saw my presentation on Friday, you'll remember that they're a little bit lacklustre. Here's another look at some of the ones I found. When it comes to being asexual, it's uncharted territory. People just don't realize sex isn't mandatory. You want to hear the words I love you, but I can't say it to you or him or her. And everybody's thinking kings and queens or never things, but love to be your need. So just you wait for me to pull out my ace. They're pretty much all just singer-songwriters. An instrument, and a voice, and not much else going on. Lyrically, they're also pretty boring to me. They suffer from a lot of the same problems that the asexual community does more generally. Because it's very hard to talk about lacking sexual attraction without mentioning sex and relationships. Which I honestly don't really want to hear about. But the only other things they seem to have come up with are these tired cliches about cake and dragons and playing cards and so on. This sort of thing, along with some hijacking by other interest groups, is kind of why I left the community and just go through this on my own these days. Anyway, so the way I've been approaching this is just to write the music in my own style, taking inspiration from some of my favourite artists. Because this is a solo project though, and my guitar skills aren't that great, I'm trying to avoid working in my usual heavy metal style, and leaning towards a more electronic industrial vibe. Nine Inch Nails and Android Lust are probably my biggest influences at the moment. The 
thing I'm doing is not actually mentioning asexuality in any of my songs. I want to focus more on the experiences I've been through, rather than what everyone else seems to be doing, just explaining what asexuality is. Because a lot of the things I've been through are actually situations that can happen even without being asexual. And I think I'd like my project to be a bit more relatable than just to this tiny niche, especially since I'm not really a fan of the asexual community. I just want to express myself. I don't want to become a spokesperson. So I guess I'm going to be approaching my lyrics in a more poetic way that's open to interpretation. But if taken from my perspective, it says what I need it to say. And I've had a lot of practice with symbolism in my writing. I do a bit of poetry, and I love double meanings. And I also wrote a song for my last band, which is really about a cat, but sounds more like it's about a person. And so I'd be using that same kind of method. Here's a clip from the cat song. So now you cold and terror, everyone can see ya. I'm a music first kind of person though, not a lyrics first person. So I've actually started with the music. But as I mentioned before, I really did lose confidence in my ability to write music at all for a while there. And that doesn't just magically come back. So for a while I'd actually been thinking of doing covers of songs I like, but in my own style. And using that as an exercise to help me get back on track. The only thing is, with this project I want to be writing original material. I don't have time to be stuffing around with cover songs, so what I've done instead is a whole lot of song analysis. It started out with me watching a few song analysis videos on YouTube, which helped me come up with strategies to write my first little snippet of a tune. And I've already snuck in an asexuality reference, using the musical notes A, C, E as a guide to choosing chords I could use, because ace is often used as a way of shortening the word asexuality. <laughs> I started doing my own song analysis, documenting song structures and instrument use and playing around in software with some of the beats and sounds and basically moulding what I found into something different. From this process I've now got 10 little song embryos coming along and I'll probably develop about half of them until I have enough for a short performance. And down the road maybe I'll release them as an EP, though for this class they'll probably just be demos because I won't have time to get them properly mastered. As for those performances, I've already got two open mic shows booked. Both the shows will be at the Townie in Newtown in May. The first one is on the 20th, which is a bit early, but that's when Chicks with Pigs is on, which showcases women in music every month and is also a really open environment that I think suits the theme of my project. I've played their shows before with my last band and it's always good fun. My second show will be on the 30th in week 13, so that fits better with the uni schedule and I'll have more time to be better rehearsed. So I'm doing both shows, just because it was tough to balance which one would be the best environment for the project versus which one would be the best timing for the course. Other than that, since I'm eventually planning to properly release the music that I come up with, I'm also thinking of designing an EP cover to go along with it. I don't know that I'd actually get CDs made, but the visual aspects of music is still very important so I will need to have something. I'm not sure what theme or mood it should have yet though. I think it very much depends on how the music turns out and exactly what asexual issues I end up exploring. So that's my project! And for the purposes of marking, I'll now play you some more of my song embryos under a slideshow of the ways I've addressed the project criteria. It's a bit weird maybe, but I can't help it. For those of you in my YouTube audience, I'll see you next vlog and leave me some comments about what you think. <laughs> Thank you.
if you like it, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. Leave comments and ding the bell. I'll see you next time. Maybe share as well. Doggo. That's you, Hopi. You're the cute doggo. Usually because... Hope!